Can't go nation, number one pick in the nation. Man, I need my payment, man, I need my placement. I am. Can't guard nation, we all we got. Man, welcome to the CGN podcast, CGN show, because that's what it is, man. Today, man, we got a treat. Got my man Jalon Kendricks here today, man. Jalon, welcome to the show today. Thanks for having me. Man, bro, bro, I, I've, I've, I've had my eyes on you, I've known you since you were probably 12 years old, man. You know, um, one of the elite basketball players here in Atlanta um, in the in 2000s. You get, said you graduated when 2010. Yeah. Graduated 2010, but but again, I, I watched his journey, um, and I just want to say, man, like to see where you are today is, bro. Like just talking to you, man. Like to watch your growth over the years, man. It's been it's phenomenal, bro. Appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? And there's no way. Um, that you can get to where you are today without being intentional about your mental health and growing and, and, and self analysis and breaking yourself down so you can grow, you know, um, like I say, I'm a, I'm a mental health guy. Like I, like, you know, I've been in mental health for about 28 years, have my own mental health company for 10 years. I'm a certified life coach now. Um, but I'm a life coach for athletes. Mm -hmm. I want to deal with athletes. I feel like I feel like athletes have so much influence um, that if 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 they're guided the right way, I, I always say athletes can change the world, man, mm -hmm. with their influence because you know athletes and celebrities in terms of actors and stuff like that, man, they just have so much influence. But even as, as a as a young kid from middle elementary, middle school, high school, especially when you get to high school. Man, everybody wants to be around you. Everybody wants a piece of you, and we, you know, we're gonna talk you about that. You speaking on today. that from experience? <laughs> <laughs> this guy right no, here. Man. Are we? Are you? He no. What? Am are I you? That? Yeah, I am. As, I, I am. I am. Because I agree with everything about the mental health. You've been a part of that as a patient, also, <laughs> right? But yeah, uh, we're not gonna go in there. It's about him today, so we, right. we'll leave that for another day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, 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 yeah, I did experience. I did experience some of that. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. But just, you know, um, the um, just just everybody wants to be a be, be just have their hands on you. The dudes want to be around you. The girls want to be around you. You know what I'm saying? Coaches are pulling at you, man, bro. Like now I, what I did not experience and what you didn't experience is being a top prospect national prospect. I was a top prospect, maybe not national, but I was. But this dude, okay. this, this, I wasn't on his level. No, this dude, this dude coming yes. out of high school was number ten in the country. Tell us, tell us about it. Yeah, tell us, please. I guess start from high school, like ninth, tenth grade. Start, you know, how big were you? The rankings and all of that. But let's okay, before that. But I want to okay. go. I want to go a little before that. All right. On your journey before that, because I know, because I, I know you went to Southwest Atlanta Christian Academy, and before that. Was that middle school? No, no, that was high school when he okay. got there. So I'm saying you before that, you were homeschooled, school. correct? Yeah, I went to, and then I went to Community Christian with right. Lindsey Davis. We had Junior Cadogan, Olu Ashalu. I was the young guy on that team. I mean, I was eighth grade playing with Junior Cadogan was the leader of uh, that pipeline from Canadians to come to America. He was the number Lindsay one player Davis in the country. Had all yeah, I remember he was that the number one yeah, player yeah, in the country. Lindsay. Junior Cadogan, you had Olu Ashalu. Right. We had a whoop stick. And, um, Solomon Hill, who ended up going to Virginia Georgia. Tech. Yeah, yeah Solomon. To, yeah, Georgia up, first, right? Or no? I think he might have went to Georgia Maybe first. Not, but I remember Solomon Virginia Hill, Tech. Virginia Tech. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I was that young kid that was on that team that was, you know, a big represent, you know, representative of Atlanta. But yeah. you were eighth and grade. How old were you in eighth grade? Because you just shared something with us. I mean, I was fairly young. <laughs> I, was fairly, uh, I mean, I was uh, I was younger than than I was supposed to be in that in that okay. particular grade. But I was I was a dog. You know what I mean? I, I had to be. Yeah. I, I talked about earlier, like, you know, uh, my attitude and my perspective of the game was because I was young. So it was that little brother, last slice of pizza type of mentality that people uh, don't really understand. But it's like, if I don't, 
my mom orders a pepperoni pizza and a cheese pizza. I don't eat pepperoni. <laughs> Guess what everybody going to get first? <laughs> cheese. cheese. And then they're going to get pepperoni afterwards. Mm. So if I don't go in there and scrape for my cheese slice, you mm. don't eat. I don't eat. So like my mentality from a young age was just like, I got to I got to eat. I got to get it. You know what I mean? I it's, gotta, oh, it's, it's a lot. It's, it's a light. It's like that a lot with all the younger siblings in sports. Because yeah. like even in my household, I got two. I got a, I got a 15 and I got an 11 yeah. and 11. He got to take his bath first. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, you know, he, he got to go to bed first. He got to go, go, go to bed first. Yeah. You know what I mean? He got to do part of the dishes he don't want. Yeah. So I, and, and he's around more and he sees more of what the older one went through. You mm. know what I mean? But and see, in my case, it was di- it was a little bit different because see, like I got in trouble more than my oldest. And Mike, like my brother will tell you, he's like, that's my little big brother. OK, like mm. I was the one that came to the house like I, I was just like slick young. I was trying to get money. I mean, my, I, I, I seen my mom buy a pack of hot dogs from the from the grocery store for 99 cents. It's 12 packs in the right. winter pack, right? Yeah, yeah. I go to the crib. I tell my friend, like, yo, tell everybody to come over. I'm selling hot dogs today. A dollar a pop. <laughs> so everybody's at the front door on the yeah, screen yeah, door yeah, knocking yeah, like, hey, yeah, like, yeah. let me get a dog. My mom walks in like, why are these kids outside of my house? Yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm, se- I'm selling. I'm selling hot dogs. She's like, you selling my food. I, I, I. Like that. I'm like, mom, I made $12 off a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like I'm, I'm working. I'm, right, I'm right, moving. Right, right, you know right, what I right, mean? Right, so, but like, it's that. So, so, and, and it's that mentality. It's that mentality that you had issues with coming up, and yeah, it's the mentality that brought you to that next level. So, like one thing that that, that we've all learned, I think, as you continue to like grow and prosper in life, is balance, right? right it's like it's like it's not it's not a bad thing that right. you're a hustler it's like when you fall into that greed it becomes bad mm-hmm. it's not a bad thing that you have a like mentality to win and like that fierceness and that you know uh ferocious or all that like that's not a bad thing it's the balance that right. we don't learn sometimes you grow up in the areas that we grew up in we don't they don't teach you about balance they teach you hey if you become a man they teach you to fight for your uh for your right fight for everything scratch claw, but they don't teach you that there's a softer side that can be executed and there's a balance in between like that that grit. So this is so so I so I, I think I said this to y'all before. There's a very I and I tell all the kids that I train this and some and you know you have to be there's a very thin line between being the ultimate competitor mm-hmm. and being crazy. It's the thinnest line you'll ever see in your effing life. Mm. I went from being one of the most competitive athletes. I got, you know, the NBA 100 camp. Yes. Yeah. So not only did I, did I win MVP, I also won mm. the. Um, I, I was the that. most coachable kid at the camp. They give an award for the most coachable what? kid at the camp. I won that award. You you fast track, and that's when you start to see the fine line between determined. You know, locked in, laser focused, and crazy, and and I was too young to right. really understand it at the time because once you get that uh, perception of you, mm-hmm. let's say we're running sprints together, if I'm laser focused and I'm locked in, that's what the perception of me is, and you guys are playing around, and I'm going balls to the wall, and I go, hey man, pick it the f up, we gotta run, man, we're trying to win that championship. Ah ah ah. The coach's like, that's my leader. Now the flip side of that which is the skinniest line you've ever seen. If the perception of me is crazy and I say the same exact thing, the coach go, calm down. It's okay. You, you're scaring the players. It's, don't get mad. I, 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 you're going to beat them up. Like, so that's the issue. So, 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 cause so the issues that you had coming up in high school and college is that, is that, was that like kind of, kind of the re like, the coaches had a problem with well, you. Well, you label. You think you, you, you got labels. You say you saying like, you get labeled. Perce- it sounds like perce- you was mislabeled. Perce- perception. Perception is reality. That's right. the world we walk. That's the world we work in. Right. You look up any article that's ever been written about me, and you actually look at the hard facts. There's none. It's all perception. It's, and it's crazy because mm. when I first moved no to facts. Atlanta, I mean, you got guys that say, "Oh, Jalen Kendrick went to four high schools because of this." Right. It's like I went to. The first high school I went to got, I mean, Community Christian, they disbanded. Right. So I had to transfer. Yeah. Right. My sophomore year, I played upon the court. Courtney Brooks at Southwest Atlanta Christian right. Academy. That's your he guy. went to Charleston Southern. Right. Right. 
the coach that we had come so in. He left for Charleston Southern. The That's coach right. that we had to come in. His first his first day on the job. Well, his first week on the job. He had University of Texas in there, and he was like, "You're going to University of Texas. You're not playing." Huh. Who said that? The, co- uh, the coach, Atlanta Christian, the new coach wow. that came in. He said, "You gotta go where?" He was like, "I want you to go to University of Texas, or you're not playing." That, that, I forget that, his name. That, I wasn't there long. Yeah, I wasn't there long enough blast. to even care. Who's the coach? I wasn't there long enough to even care. You know, because you, know, you know, I was the girls' coach there. Right, I left right. So he was the right year after. Before. He was right after. Uh, he was a taller guy, bald head guy. So he he made that remark. He made a few more oh, remarks, and I then can't remember his name, he didn't last long. No, he didn't. And last that was long. the reason because you, if you think about it, that year we had me. Uh, Dante Williams that went to UGA transferred in from uh, before he went to Miller Grove. We had Jamil Jones that went to um, Green Force. He was transferring in. We, I mean, we had a we we're gonna be a national team, right? Just disbanded. So left there. My junior year, I went to Westlake with my aunt. I mean, with, and I lived with my auntie and uncle, you know, over there at Westlake. And then last year, I'm just like, phew. I mean, I want to see what. Well, you with know, the national with that national. Thing. Yeah, national like, yeah, I mean, national yeah, went so Wheeler. I went to Wheeler because I'm like, okay, I've dominated one a two a three. Like, let's see. So, let's see. I was competitive that way. Like, I wanted to find who got the best, the best, best teams. And at the time it was it? that Mary. That was McKeecher and Wheeler, Wheeler. right? You know, Mary. Yeah, yeah, so I was like, I wanted I was like, let same, me put me in Colorado. there and let me see like if I'm around sharks, what type of shark I am. Now, yeah. let me ask you this. Who was helping you with these decisions? Was it your dad, your mom? Was you pioneering all this? Was you, you know what I mean? Because even to the to the fact when you was at when you were saying you played up a lot, yeah. was that your parents' decision? Was it your decision? I think I think it was it was my parent. It was my it was definitely it uh, it kick started from my dad. My okay. dad's a warrior. Okay. Like my dad's a gladiator. I mean, like, uh, in 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 every sense you think about it. Like my dad's the type of person. Like no matter what he does, he's gonna do it 110. And so stuff like energy like that transfers, right? That's right. He may not know how to play football. You put him on some pads, he's gonna run you over. Right. He may not know how to play basketball, but you give him a basketball, he gonna run you over. You know what I mean? Like you, so. The, looking back at that now, mm-hmm. do you think that was too much pressure for you? No, I don't. I think. Or I not think, enough. I think, or I think there's 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 that made a, you who there's you a my mom uh, had her first kid before she was 15. She had wow. pressure. Mm. I didn't have pressure. I but did my, you? But did? But, but did you, you? I mean, yeah. Hindsight is 2020. But yeah. But so back it's, then, the, it's, it's the development of how you, the stepping stones that you that you give a kid to to grow into whatever they are. But I can't call it pressure because my dad did the best. He he, he didn't have a dad around, mm. so he did the best that he could do, and he did an amazing job. He had a, he produced an All America. He produced a professional athlete. He produced someone that's intelligent enough to. Do do business ventures outside the basketball world. I have friends that play in the NBA and broke now. I had a job at Top Golf. Do you know how crazy it is to like be an All American and have a friend come talk to you at Top Golf? Like, oh yeah, man, this is my girl, this is my boy, man. He, yeah, he, oh boy, you playing that now? Like, bro, can I sit you down? <laughs> 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 but that also goes to show like what type of man my dad built. Because my That's my right. dad said, man, you That's you right. can't just sit there. I get it, man. You you a year removed from college. You was on a lot. You was a lottery pick at one point. But that you Jalon Kendrick, and that 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 illuminates. That's that's, that's bigger than basketball. That's bigger. That's so like, and it took for me to work at a place like Top Golf to start to like really understand like mm. my trajectory and how powerful I was, and to kind of like get back on track to like what I was doing. So and, and, go ahead. So so let's talk about. I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest anybody working at Top Golf. Like. <laughs> so let's talk about um the pressure. Let's stay on that. Mm-hmm. Just the pressure of a top prospect. Like how like when you start talking about your peers coming from peers treating you a certain way. You use the term. We were talking yesterday. We had this little we talked for a few minutes yesterday and you said it's a fairy tale. Yeah. Mix the fairy tale mixed in with the pressure. Explain what you meant first of all when you said it's a fairy tale, how they, you know, how you come up as a top prospect. So, I think now it's completely different than when I was uh playing. I think more so the fairy tale comes with the money. Mm. Like, you know, when you're young, you're a top prospect, you have access. Uh, you have uh, access to clothes. You have access to different places that you may not have had access to prior to being having such success. But the fairy tale comes when you have the access and the money. 
mm. and you start doing things like like we talked about yesterday, going to Popeyes and getting a two dollar sandwich and leaving two hundred dollars just because I can. I just got that two hundred dollars means nothing to me. It, just, it it means not not much. So like, post that, post you going to every club and they letting you in. Post that. That's where the trauma comes in. At, I feel like, you know what I mean? When you get Lil Wayne, who is the hottest rapper in the world. And he could just walk into the Miami Heat game. And then y'all remember that one year he couldn't walk in because they're like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. you ain't dropping no hot album. Who are you? Mm. I'm Lil Wayne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got a ticket. Mm. Mm. So what does that do to Lil Wayne's psyche? Mm. Hair start falling out and start, you know what I mean? Like, like that like that bothers you. So that's the fairy tale. A lot, a lot of like high level athletes, especially ones that are that are getting a substantial amount of money. They aren't. Some of them aren't saving it. A lot of them are. Some of them are, are just spending money on like endless or you know things that we will probably find I know like you see that unnecessary. All the time. You know what I mean? And so once it's these hard. things, Go ahead. it's hard. Like, I was just gonna say, I know you just said you know I see that, but it's hard as an agent because I'm not their financial advisor. I can advise all I want, yeah. but I don't control their accounts or anything like that. Right. You know what I mean? So it's, you it's know, the, but it's the fairy tale because because yeah. once that once that once that twenty thousand dollars a week that you're getting twenty dollars every two days you're getting stops, stops right. Now your spending habits are in line with twenty thousand dollars a week because I can spend nineteen five and I'm gonna get nineteen I'm gonna get twenty bands next week. Right. So I'm fine. So then what happens is what? Once that stops, it's gone. But not even that. Uh, the psyche has told you, oh, I gotta keep living like this. I gotta. I'm him. You you know what I mean? And so that's what like messes a lot of but, people up. That's the pressure from the outside world of mm. trying to live into this fairy tale. But even if you take the money, if you take the money. If you just just let's just talk about just being the uh, top guard, the top guard in the country as a high school kid, or you know the top, you know the elite twenty, whatever, whatever it is. Man. So in the, in that setting, it's perspective. I think for me, it's perspective. You got some people it's actual pressure to where like, man, I gotta, I gotta perform. I, you know, I gotta feed my mama, and I gotta, I gotta, and I think that's I can't speak on that because I ain't ever feel like that. I always wanted to be him. I always wanted to be that guy. So when I became that guy, it was like the pressure was then, hey, I'm I'm top five. I can't go to six. Like I got right. 10,000 people behind me. Mm. Like the work ethic and the things that I have to do to keep them people behind me and then go catch the five people in front of me like is is crazy. It's endless. It's it's a it's a it, an insane mindset you have to have. Mm. Like my my whole mindset was like I just want to be better than you. I used to tell people all the time. So how could you? So, so, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. You used to tell people all the time what? No, that was my whole that was my whole motto. I just want to be better than you. So so how if you had to talk to her, if you we had we had the number one prospect because mm-hmm. because we, we you know you you had the number one prospect in the country, number one guard, point guard in the country, right in front of you. And you know, you know, you know better than anybody what he's what, what he's dealing with. What advice would you give? Him? What advice would you give him to keep his sanity, bro? It's a. The way my brain works, I can't answer that question easily because I would actually need the individual mm. to actually like see what what building blocks he already has in I got place. A better question: The younger you is sitting in front of you. Go get out. Go get your money. It it would have been simple. I nobody told me that. Hey man, you a lot. What age there. are we talking? I'm saying high school, man. I think yeah, I think I as a number one prospect in high school. I think I would have told him I would have sat him down and really made it very simple for for him and like very lamex and like laid out like look son. You're a top 15 pick on the draft board. Mm. You can either participate your freshman year of college. You can red shirt and because for me it's like I knew what I wanted to be like and And I was a basketball player. So You know what don't mean to cut you off, but if this was now, will you be heading towards overtime mm. or the G League? You know those situations right now. Would you have said, "Screw school, I'm going to get paid now"? So, so because 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 as high as you was ranked, 
If this oh, yeah. if this was now, you would have had that opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, you would have been able to go G think, League yeah, or think, possibly uh, I overtime. think that I would, and my advice to my younger self was, would be still like the building blocks. Okay, let's get you with a financial. Because being a basketball player is a job. They tricked yeah. us and told us it wasn't. Because just because you want to be a doctor doesn't mean your job is more important than mine. Right. Man, somehow you, you, your, your career is better than mine because you chose to be a doctor for the rest of your life, and she chose to be a nurse, and he chose to be a lawyer. But if I choose to be a doctor, oh, the basketball is going to stop bouncing one day. Everything going to stop one day. Mm. You can't be a doctor for your whole life. You can't be a lawyer. Everything stops one day, literally. So it's the worst advice ever. It's like, but if I have a chance to go feed my family and make millions as a 17 year old. Yeah, the only thing that I would change is like, okay, boom, you're a young man about to be put in a situation that you you've become the crutch for every a lot of people around you. So let's start to put you into mental health, you know, get you a life coach. Let's get you financial, not a financial advisor, financial class so you can learn how to, you know, and become earn your, more financial earn your literate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can become more financial literate. Like, those are things like, hey, look, this is what being a basketball player is, and, like, I'm going to drill this and, like, drill this into and this you. And this is crazy, because when he, when he came to me with the idea of bringing you on, I didn't know you. I knew of you, mm-hmm. followed you, but my first thing, he, you know, he said he wanted to talk about some of the challenge he has and all that, and I said, yeah, you know, my first word to him, like, yeah, bring that nut on here. <laughs> He was a nut back then. Now, bring, bring, bring little Ron Artest on him. Let me see. Let me dig into his mind, and never knew all this about you. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you were labeled, like you said, the four different schools. You already get that label. Yeah. Right now, they're starting to call them portal kids. I'm starting to see them in AAU already, and I'm starting to label them. He's gonna be a portal kid. I already mm-hmm. see how his dad treating him. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But now you bring the like the reasons. There were legitimate reasons you had to leave. Yeah. And I mean, like, no, and nobody, and nobody, it's too much work to do your own due diligence, right? Right. Like, it's too much work to be like, oh, he's not Ron Artest. I mean, he called me yesterday and asked me if I was bipolar. Yeah, and I was like, wait, what? When did? (laughs) Because that's what he thought. That's what he told me. You know what I mean? But that's the label. So now, and no, No, I thought I heard you. No, I thought I heard you say that on the podcast. He's bipolar too, by the way. Yeah, you. That's what I'm saying. The due diligence, the due diligence behind it. You thought something, but you didn't do the due diligence behind it. It's right. just like I, if well, I heard, right. if I heard you a certain way and I don't do my own due diligence, now I take that. Hey, he bipolar. And guess what? I tell, I tell him. Right. He don't have a clue who I right. am. I tell him. Right. Right. He don't, you know what I mean? So right. now I got five Perception. people. Right. He's bipolar. Now they go tell five because yeah. my name's going to come up. Right. I'm a top kid. But look, you know j- j- just to, to my defense, I was, you was on a pie. This was about. This had to be about yeah, I never two said years that, ago. Though. I thought I'm <laughs> listening. I was in the public. I was listening to. I remember. I was listening to it, it in, in a, a public parking lot. It was a bad setting, probably. You know what I mean? Wi-Fi wasn't booming. I yeah. I, he stayed with them. He stayed with them uh, minute phones. <laughs> yeah. But look, but what was the first thing I said when I came in here? Gee, I, I made a mistake. Yo, he was not bipolar. <laughs> so don't bring that up. I said, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm gonna bring it up anyway. Yeah. I'm joking. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. So my bad on that. No, no, my, that's fine. My, my but I mean, that. that's but that comes from like communication and talking, right? right. Now you you find out something different. But everybody don't have that luxury. Like, I, I don't have the luxury of talking to every NBA coach and every part to rewrite the narrative mm. that was written for me. Mm. That's why perception in the beginning mm. is so important. Mm. That's why shielding and protecting our, our youth mm. is so important and mm. protecting how their perception is is so important. And also grooming these kids in a proper way to, like, be in line with what it is to be a professional, not only in a basketball or athletic setting, but just yeah, in, pro life. in life. Pro, I, I, I started, I started um, this this brand AAU like we program. Huh? It was a no, 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 no. This was my whole thing Florida. was this was this is because this is Wendell's senior year. I, I, I had two two years. I had an all star game, mm-hmm. but it was called the pro conscious. It was called pro conscious athletes, mm-hmm. pure representation mm-hmm. of con- pro conscious athletes, pure representation of conscious athletes, because we are all a representation of our programs that we're in, uh, uh, parenting, whatever. We're all pros. We're pure representations of where we came up. And what we did was, before they played, the night before, we had a financial workshop, mental health workshop. Um, we had my man, Maui Davis, from the Davis-Bozeman Law Firm. He had this... Um, uh, uh, the consequences of thug life. 
Mm. He had this this whole thing that he did, the consequences of thug life, whole presentation. Because it is so. Because what happens? See, this is what I'm saying. This is why I'm a life coach for athletes. Athletes, bro. You, no matter, like you said earlier, no matter what, you're going to get special privileges. It's just what it is. It's just what it is. But what happens is they get this spirit of entitlement and they start going into a whole nother direction, man. And they can't be not they're just focused on and everybody around us is focused on them being a pro in that sport and not a pro for life. Mm. And it really, really messes them up, man. Like this is what we're dealing with. This is why we see some of the craziness that we see on a professional level, because if you don't get it, if you're not getting it now, I mean, in terms of when you're like coming up, by the time you get that money, that's when, like you were just talking about, that's when shit gets crazy. Yeah. It gets crazy because now that money just, just gives you that magnifying glass. Think about this: a week ago, I could barely afford oodles and noodles from Kroger. I can buy a McDonald's. Now. You know what I mean? Like right. a week ago, like there's little. I got friends that's like, bro, like a week, like bro, you my two weeks ago, mm. we was trying to like put a dollar together so we can get. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to be prepared for that, man. Yeah. And it takes time. And that's that's what a lot of other cultures have uh, in place that we don't. You know how many dudes, you know, like, I, I think, um, and when we just talked, I don't know, I thought about LeBron James. Bro, I don't know who was it, what, uh, folks who he was coming up with, but they did a great job, bro, of just preparing him to be the number one pick. And, and, and bro, the hype, the hype that that dude had for him to live up to that. That's amazing. Nobody thought he was going to you know, the average person could not live up to, to all the hype that he had, but they prepared them. But I think that there, there could be a lot more, maybe not LeBron James, but how many kids there's a reason why most kids who go to the lottery. Most they get come to lot. You, you know, the G League is full of them kids. Like you look at the rosters in the G League, you're like, oh, shit, I forgot about him. Mm-hmm. I forgot about him. And I also think like, LeBron was a kid that had that had the potential to save the NBA again, like to kind of like revamp, yeah, like revitalize them for that. Bro. And they prepared him, and you know he had people in place. I wouldn't be surprised if the NBA put people in place to help prepare him for to. I mean, it's a business. He came from. He generates big time revenue. Cleveland, yeah. like Cleveland, the the type of revenue he generated for Cleveland for the is city, yeah is insane for the city, the whole state. You got people that look. Oh yeah, I'm from. I Where's Cleveland at? Before right. LeBron, where is Cleveland? Right. After LeBron, people, oh yeah, I'm from Akron too. Like what? Right, 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 <laughs> right, 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 right. You know what I mean? How'd right. you, I, you know what I mean? So but, he, but he was in a situation like his 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 upbringing where it could it could have it it could if the right people wasn't around him if they didn't prepare him it could have went left. Oh, that, I mean everything. Could, and it goes could go left, left a lot with the and this is why we doing this show, man. Like like I, honestly, bro, like this is why. This is why I came up with this concept of this show because, bro, I see it like I like I see it in you sports. It's crazy. Yeah, it's sick. Yeah. It's sick. Yeah, this is the crazy. word that I it's use. Crazy. It's a sick culture, man. Yeah. So this that's part of the reason why we do. We want to help parents, coaches, players, handlers, anybody who's involved in this culture. We're doing this for the culture, man. We want to help them to navigate through it, to not make the same mistakes that somebody else made. You know what I'm saying? These coaches that you got, you, you got coaches out here who are good coaches and want in terms of how they win and how they preparing kids on the court, but then they do shit off the court or do other things that that can easily take a kid left. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and really, and, and, Sorry to cut you off, right. but me being a co-host of this show, I was one of them, Kendrick. I was a nut, not not a no, super a, nut, but bro, you, bro, but, you but, got, but, he was. I, I had issues told coaching. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he made me not want to coach with him, bro. After the first time I coached the turtle, I was like, bro, I can't. I, yeah. This was after I was done coaching, and now I see I was a little bit of a nut, not. In terms of coaching, and I wasn't a nut. Man, I not want to be clear. I wasn't a nut. You right. guys were nuts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, I wasn't. Yeah. I, was, I was a nut. I, I was. I, I just had wanted partners. to win. I had <laughs> right. like you no know, towards maybe refs. Just 
arguing, things like that. You know what I mean? Because I, I have a quick temper. I was a special ed kid. Yeah. I tell that pe- tell that to people to this day. Yeah. Who probably done a good job though coming out of that. Bro. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. You know what I mean? Special ed. But yeah, I love he's it. done a really good Just job. Only, you know what I mean? I got two degrees, but even yeah. though that don't measure success. Yeah. But it's a great accomplishment though. Yeah. To you know what from, I mean? from your right. humble beginnings. What do you say now to the dad you would see? That might be doing you think is doing too much to a parent. Mm. I mean, too much to a kid. Train, 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 train. Oh, Marinovich in them. Huh? Marinovich in them. You yeah. Know, you know who Marinovich? You know Marinovich. Let's just say uh, this that dad that's like, okay, if you're not putting that ball up in the air seven times a week, we not you're not gonna um succeed. Or if you're not in that batting cage six days a week, or you're no not no balance, having no, no balance. balance. What do you say to that dad? That thinks he can make a pro, and mm. really you can't make a pro. Let's get that. Yeah, you know I mean, can you, you make a pro? I mean, that's I think an episode. I think let's I think it's that. Tough. That's an episode. I think it's tough because when a dad is when a dad, so it's twofold, right? Right. If the son is in alignment with that type of mentality, mm. and he's pushing his dad, and his dad's pushing him back. And that's his like escape and his mm. uh, peace of mind. Mm. I don't think it's the worst thing. Mm. I always mm. think balance mm. is necessary. Mm. So even if you're a kid and that's your work ethic and that you still have to like train your mind to be at peace and at bay mm. and live in the moment and how yes. and you have to separate yourself from a sport and like, okay, uh, Jalon Kendrick, the basketball player, that's my employee. Jalon Kendrick, I'm the employer. So like, I have to sometimes take a break and say, okay, employee, you're off for two days. Right. So the employer could like maybe have fun with what you, ma- yes. the money you made me. It's a great point, bro. What you've done for me. Thank you. But like, you're so point. obsessive yeah. that sometimes you driving the employee, the employer insane. And now you're stressing me out, son. You know what I mean? So I think. It's difficult because you have some fathers that push their sons to that type of level and they do make pros. Right. And they are successful. Right. And they are well, great. Every pro's parents that I've asked what you could have done different. They, they was like they said I would have not been as hard. But then they always come back with but would he have been what he is? Yeah, so it's a, it's a fine line. Nobody has figured it out. Right. Like, wh- whenever you think you're right, mm. you're not. I guess when, so they, like, when they do figure it out, they'll bottle it up and put it on eBay for a couple of million. Yeah, <laughs> so so I do. But I also think, like we talked about earlier, if you're a parent that is really pushing your child to be a professional athlete, the building blocks that are separated from the actual game are the things you need to focus on. Mental health, yoga, um, financial literacy, um, uh, mm. vocational skills, maybe going to a Toastmaster. Like, if you're really going to invest in no. his, invest in the total package, don't I'm, just get me the nuggets. I'm, I want the fries, the goosebumps, toy, the, the, the power rate. Right. I want everything, right. give it all to me, right? Like, you know, what I mean, they just want you to get the, 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 the Big Mac, right? That's what that's, I think, that's parents' problem. They want to get the Big Mac, which is the, the NBA, the NFL, the glory. But it's like, yo, there's sides to this. And so now when they get the Big Mac, they're like, yo, okay, boom. Now we need a financial advisor. And now we just gave you a $20 million check. How are you going to divide? Oh, I'm about this, 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 taxes. You know what I mean? Like, we see that over and over and over again. We see it over and over again. Like, you know, you got, you got big-time athletes that have done crazy, amazing things, trying to commit suicide, going depressed, going in hiding. Yeah. You had, you know, Michael Beasley on television crying, crying and, yeah, and, yeah. and pleading and saying he has nobody. Right. No one. Steph Marbury, we watched him. With well, they, with the, yeah. So many that, that so doesn't even want to come in the front reason, of the camera and say it. But the reason why is that it's like they get poor. It's like they're drinking. They get poor juice that has no nutrients in it. It's just, it's poison yeah. in them. And they think you know, they get their self-esteem is built from, I told you, we were talking yesterday about Dion. I said it the last right. time we shot. About, about, about Dion. Dion was the most decorated athlete in history, and he tried to commit suicide when it was over because they, they get their self-esteem from 
prime time, prime, prime, prime time. Yeah. They're from the crowd. I mean, After that's done, then what? I mean, because you think about it, the 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 elites or the people, you know what I mean, the the whatever, they not scared of African Americans that have money. They're scared of African Americans that know what to do with their money. Mm. Good point. Like we give you, we'll give you motherfucking yeah. money. Right. With with that being said, because you know, I know we gotta wrap it up in a few minutes. What are you doing now? What? Yes. Let, 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 let them know where exactly where you are now, what you're doing right now to end this. Uh, so right now, I'm s- still currently playing but overseas basketball. What country? Um, this past year, I was in Mozambique. In okay. the NBA or Africa, I was in Kuwait and Mozambique. Okay. Um, looking to go to Asia this upcoming year, but may just go back to Mozambique because okay. we lost in the championship last year. Okay. So you um, should, you're about to leave any day now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, that's what I got going on on that side. Other than that, businesses uh, and yeah, businesses as far as like, you know, I got a my 501c3, so I got my nonprofit. Shout it out. Uh, it's called KEP, um, the Kendrick Youth they, Empowerment uh, IG? Program. Is it IG? Yeah, so we have an IG. It's called FTCFY, uh, the mob. Okay. And basically this past summer, we had a uh, summer league uh, team participate in ABL. It was all women's team. Me, April Sykes uh, helped me basically get a lot of players. Uh, Kalita Miller as well and we had over 10 plus WNBA women show up and play um, represent the mob which is called the meaning of basketball and mind over body Um, so pushing that brand a lot of initiatives in the community as far as like starting out after school programs that centered around mental health financial literacy uh, vocational skills while also like tying in that basketball aspect to it Um, we also want to do things as you know as, as far as like doing like a Table clean. Well, well, people know how to, you know, eat properly at a table, how to tie a tie. We're going to end it up basically by doing like a student tie event for a lot of kids. Um, we're this working on like CGN some. This is dude. <laughs> this is what we about. I'm trying to, I, the dude is talking. I'm literally getting goosebumps, bro. Literally, I, I swear, man, this is a CGN athlete. Yeah. This is what it's about. I didn't mean to cut you off, nah, bro, you but, but bro, I, I'm just to, I didn't mean to hit the mic, but just, just to, um, to know you, bro, to see where you come from, bro, it is to sit here and talk to you like this. But the bro. crazy thing is, and, and I know we gotta wrap it up soon. Like I always been like that. Like I was, I was. You can go to the wreck I grew up in, which I've donated shoe machines. Is that Burdette? Yeah, Burdette. Yeah. So I, I, I grew up in Burdette. Mm. Um, I donated shoe machines, Vertimaxes, all oh, types wow. of jerseys. They play with yeah, a basketball bro. that says Jalon Kendrick. Oh Because I think like yeah, what, bro, what? I is, mean, when you were young, what do I, you do? First thing you do, you grab basketball, you walk out the gym, right? Right. So now a lot of these ricks are, are, are don't have a lot of basketballs they, and stuff. Right, so I've right. donated. I work up budget. So I go over. I don't have kids and stuff right now. So a lot of money I make from overseas. I give do. Back, uh, I do give back. I was honored enough to have. I'm the youngest person to have his own day in Atlanta, as far as like a proclamation for his own day. So that was huge. Um, so I have Jalon Kendrick Day, August fourth. You know, training kids and stuff like that. Editing. But I, but but what I am saying is like, um, I was doing stuff like this. I was coaching kids. I was 12, 13, coaching six and under. Wow. I was in mm. high school. You could ask uh, Yates' dad. He used to. Help. I used to throw camps while I was in high school for kids. Free camps. He actually came, came, helped me come up with names and stuff. He would be the trainer. You talking about Ray? Yeah. Like, I used to throw free camps for kids. Like, I've been doing this in my entire, entire life. Like, once I get $10, I'm spending five of it in the hood. Like, you know what I mean? Like, to do stuff because I wanted to be the example. I wanted to be the person that, that, that made it and came back and talked to me when I was younger. They never came back. So, I wanted to be that person. You see what I'm saying? So, it's like... The difference was I hated a I hated a attention that wasn't like strictly on the basketball court. Like that that was my biggest thing. You like, hated attention that wasn't strictly on the basketball court. Yeah, like I didn't really like to get in the club because I was mm. like I wait in line. Like, you know what I mean? I'm with Wow. Like, you know, that that balance that you talking about like That's pressure, dope. it wasn't no pressure. It was like I thought I was regular. That was my problem. Mm. Mm. My problem was that I thought I was like you and then like like instead of understanding that Harriet Tubman had to free herself first mm. in order to free everybody else. Mm. So that was like what I didn't like. I didn't like process early into after the you know what I mean to kind of after the fact like okay boom like if I make it to the league then I can come back and get y'all the whole time I'm trying to bring y'all y'all to get the, 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 the tunnel this big. I'm trying to walk shoulder to shoulder with 10 people. 
because we all from the same whoop de woo and we all regular. I'm just like you. Mm. I ain't no different from you. I'm chilling. Mm. But that ain't the case. And sometimes you have to understand that you're not regular. You're special. You're different. You're built different. And like sometimes you're built different. It's your job to make it keep your plate full in order in order for you to ration out portions of chicken and salad and I can't feed you if I'm stuck. Jay-Z said that. I, I can't feed you if I'm one of y'all. But if I make it and I get back, it's a win-win. Mm. But it's hard for me to do it. That's right. On the equal playing field. I gotta get there first. That's right. And Yo. then but a lot of people don't understand it. Yo. I didn't understand that. Yo, I wanna say this on camera. Jalan, please let me know which I, I wanna be a part of your 501 C3. I want I want to bring athletes in to help these yeah. young high school dudes. I want to bring them in to help, bro, to help whatever whatever it is that you're doing, bro. I want to be a part, bro. For sure. For sure. For real talk. No, no, no. I'm we're gonna get it going. Let's do it. CGN, we all we got.